Have you ever, as a kid, had that one friend who tries to test the rules of any game you play with them just to see what they can get away with? Like the I'm not touching you type tiptoeing the line stuff? Well, this video is basically the adult version of that. Times where real life adult athletes thought they were outsmarting the system, but right then and there the officials were like, yeah, no, you can't do that. So who are some of these almost innovators in sports? The first guy I want to talk about is a little different than the rest. The dude in question wasn't punished until after the game had happened in, and he also is the only coach or manager that's going to show up in this list. Let me introduce you to Bobby Valentine. See, back on June 9th, 1999, when he was managing the Mets in a game against the Blue Jays, there was a call made against his catcher. They called a catcher's bock, which I guess is a real thing they can call, so if you're confused not knowing what that means, Bobby V didn't seem to know that either. He didn't like that they did that, so he argued with the umpires and they threw him out. Pretty standard stuff so far. But Bob wanted to be there for the rest of the game, so he did return in a disguise. And here he is. Yeah, that's right, this dude literally returned in the Groucho Marx getup and tried to hide in the background so he could be there for the rest of the game. Dude, like this just, it seems like a scene from a sitcom. And as you can hear, the commentators weren't falling for it. Hey, Bobby Valentine the dugout. Wait. Give me that he was fined $5,000 and suspended for two games for his incognito shenanigans. Honestly, Legend. But what happens when they catch you in real time pulling a stunt like this? This is just the tip of the iceberg for these little stinkers getting their schemes shut down right in front of a packed stadium and live television audiences to see. And since we're talking about getting tossed, Adrian Beltre got tossed once. And I can guarantee that the reason for it has never happened before and will never happen again in MLB. In a game in 2017 against the Marlins, Beltre is in the on-deck circle getting ready to bat, except he's not actually in the on-deck circle. Which, in case you don't know, is the designated spot where the next hitter needs to stand when he's taking his warm-up swings. Instead of standing on the Rangers mat they had set out, he's standing more like 10 feet to the right of it towards the plate. The umpire notices this and comes over to tell him, hey, you gotta get back in the on-deck circle. Now, at this point in the game, Texas is down 18 to 6, so he's probably feeling a little spicy at this point. So what does he decide to do? He says, okay, if I have to be in the circle, I'll just move the circle. Ump's not too happy about the sass, so he tosses Beltre. Like this whole situation itself is just hysterical, but honestly, one of the funniest parts of it to me is the reaction of this guy in the red shirt in the background. In just this short clip, this guy went from confusion to pure belly laughing joy. And honestly, I agree, this is hilarious. I mean, obviously this wasn't gonna fly. Just think of the implications this could have if they just let him do what he tried to do. Imagine moving the on-deck circle right next to the plate and doing everything you can to throw the pitcher off or even moving it to the outfield and trying to steal signs. I mean, obviously Beltre wasn't trying to do that, but I mean, you know. But there have been times when athletes have moved things in order to get an advantage. For example, in this NHL game, legendary New York Rangers goalie Henrik Lundqvist gets absolutely slammed by Ryan McDonough and is expecting a timeout so he can take a breather. But it doesn't happen. So in response to this, when he sees the puck coming back towards him, he decides he's gonna get the ref's attention by flipping the net. Okay, I don't think I need to tell you you can't do this in hockey, but in case I do, you can't do this in hockey. <laughs> like, like, that is some legendary strategy right there. Opponents can't score goals into the net if there is no net. Game-breaking loophole, I know. In the process of being mad about not getting his time out, he got a penalty called against him. Because, you know, flipping the net is a just a bit of a delay of game. I mean, hey, maybe he took inspiration from David Leggio, a goalie from the NHL's top development league that had an even more extreme version of this incident. About a year and a half or so before this, David also flipped a net. This one didn't seem to be totally out of anger though, as it was just a standard drive coming towards him, and he decided he didn't want to deal with a two-on-one right now. Good old Hank was only slapped with a little delay a game penalty, but David was punished for blatantly avoiding oncoming opponents about to try to score with having to defend against a penalty shot. If you're not really a hockey guy, basically that just means the other team gets to start on the center line and they get a chance at a one-on-one. -on -one. And Legio blocked it. That means that literally flipping the net kinda worked. David Legio shoved the net to the ground to prevent a goal, and then wound up taking the W off the exchange. That feels kind of wrong, doesn't it? And I mean, there's probably not a rule against this specific set of events because, like, when is this ever gonna happen again? This next one I'm gonna talk about is interesting because unlike the ones before that seem to just be spur-of-the-moment things, besides maybe Bobby Valentine cosplaying as the Google incognito symbol, this one definitely was premeditated and actually was a pretty interesting idea if it didn't 
completely go against one of the rules of football. In this game against the Ravens, Brown's QB, Johnny Manziel, heads over to talk to his coaches Kyle Shanahan and Mike McDaniel. Watch what happens next. To provide a spark mainly for their offense. Did you catch that? Manziel looks like he's being subbed out of the game and is pretending to talk to the coaches during the play. And once the ball is snapped, you can see Shanahan say go and Manziel takes off to run his route. Yes, they really tried that. As ingenious as it is to have a disguised QB pose as the 11th man on the field for the Browns to be a wide receiver, they penalize this right away, and for good reason. Receivers have to do what's called getting set before the ball is snapped. It basically prevents any type of trickery or running start type things during the play. This does not constitute being set. And hey, if you didn't have to be set before the play starts, he would have gotten some pretty nice yards off it. I mean, it's one of those plays that would only work once if it works at all, which it doesn't. But hey, worth a shot. And speaking of shots, basketball. What a, what a f***ing segue that was, eh? In this game against the Clippers, Miami Heat guard Tyler Hero takes a practice free throw? I, I don't know, this situation's confusing, let me try to just break it down. After a foul by Marcus Morris Sr., the Heat are given a free throw. Pretty standard stuff. Hero stands up to the free throw line when the ref passes him the ball and he instantly and nonchalantly shoots it and misses. The referee says, all right, that was a missed shot, to which one of Hero's teammates says, it's not a missed shot, he called a timeout. Apparently, they were supposed to make a substitution, and I guess he thought there was a timeout that was called, so he just kind of took the shot just because. However, whether or not he was telling the truth, spinning a missed first free throw as, oh, I was just doing a practice shot is not gonna fly. Could you just imagine how much everyone would have flipped out if there was a reality where the ref was just like, oh, okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha, that one doesn't count. It does open up that possibility for a little goober to try to push the envelope with that, though. I personally don't know who's in the wrong in this situation, because as one of the commentators mentions, if there's players out, sometimes you just take a shot because why not? But the final ruling was it counted, so no points for you, I guess. And he also missed the second one too, so really no points for you. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird! It's a plane! It's Adman. Hi. Do you wear clothes? No. Okay, weirdo. Well, if you ever decide you want to, you should get one of these bad boys. Right here. One of these ones. Because ladies and gentlemen, this video is sponsored by us. Seeing as how the A's are gonna be leaving Oakland soon, we decided that sucks. And we wanna leave the city better than when we found it. So we're gonna be selling these shirts for a while at basically as cheap as we can get them with manufacturing costs. The profits will be split with Oakland-based nonprofits. So if you wanna help out the city, get some swag while you're at it, check the link in the description. It'll be down there. I I promise it'll be down there. So go on, get yourself a shirt. Please. Please, please get one of these shirts. Mike says if they don't sell out, he's gonna do something not nice. And, and I don't like when he does that. The profits go to good causes. So if you do end up picking some up, we really appreciate it. Anyways, let's get back into the video. Woo! With all the goofy stuff I've covered so far, I gotta mention one of the goofiest baseball shenanigans of all time in here too. In a game between Kansas City and Seattle, Amos Otis hits a little dinker that just starts rolling out the left field line. In baseball, a lot of the times players won't touch the ball if they think it's gonna roll over the line and go foul. But when this ball continued to roll fair, Mariners third baseman Lenny Randall decides he's gonna take fate into his own hands. Or into his mouth, that is. Or wait, no, I didn't, he didn't take fate into his mouth, I meant like, just, just watch the clip. Mariners are going to let it roll, 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 roll. Lenny Randall gets down on his hands and knees and blows on it like a curler. The big bad wolf over here decides he's going to blow the rolling ball foul in order to bring Otis back to the plate. And I mean, hey, that boy's got some powerful lungs on him because he actually manages to do it. The Royals, justifiably, lose their minds when this is initially called a foul ball. Lenny Randall thought he was just being slick not touching the ball with his hands to shoo it away, but he still directly pushed the ball into the foul territory in some way. I mean, like, of course the umpires didn't let him get away with it, obviously obviously, since just because you didn't physically touch the ball, that doesn't mean you didn't interfere. Lenny claims, and this is actually something he claims, all he was trying to do was yell at the ball instructions to go foul. Go foul, 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 go
<laughs> but I mean, like, watch the footage for two seconds, and it's hilariously obvious to notice that this man is just huffing and puffing for days. I mean, hey man, props for trying it. He should try out for the Savannah Bananas with antics like that. Now, when it comes to weird, uncommon penalties coming out, I think this is a pretty good one. 1991 AFC Divisional Round Game. Chiefs versus Bills. The Chiefs wide receiver Rob Thomas has just caught a pass and is running up the field for a first down. The defense is quick to slow him down, and it doesn't look like he's going to make it to the first down line. His teammate, offensive lineman Tim Grunhard, that is a sick name, notices this and, with his quick wit, gets a flag for something that really doesn't get called very often assisting the runner, which technically is what every blocker does, so this had to be some sort of foul maneuver to get the refs to call a penalty that 99.9999% of football fans have probably never heard of. I mean, he did make it over the first down line, albeit with a broken neck probably, but it doesn't matter anyways because, as I mentioned before, they got a flag for assisting the runner. Quick thinking by Grunhard to try to make something happen, only he may not have had any idea there was a deep cut rule against pulling someone down the field. The refs, however, did know about this and called out this incredibly rare penalty. And I'm not joking when I say it's a rare penalty. This appears to be the only time we could find a record of in the modern NFL era that it's shown up in the league. Tim Grunhard being called for this in 1991 will more than likely go down as the last time this will ever be called in the NFL. That is, unless the NFL decides that the Eagles tush push play counts. On a similar note, I'd like to end this video off with probably the most unhinged strategies out of all these ones that we've seen so far today. USC is facing Arizona in college football. In the first quarter of this game, after a few minutes or so, USC haven't been able to make a first down, so they just have to punt. The punt doesn't come out as clean as it should, so the receiver for Arizona decides he's just gonna let it be. Football has a rule on punts where to ensure the punt returner doesn't get totally annihilated, they can wave their hands to signal what's called a fair catch. It's basically the returner surrendering that once they catch the ball, the play ends there and they won't run away with the ball. But if they touch the ball and they don't clearly catch it, the punting team can try to snatch the ball back up. Now, this is where the insane part comes in. Arizona's punt returner calls a fair catch. The ball slowly dies down in front of him, and the play is going to die with Arizona getting the ball. Three of the USC players decide they are going to grab him drag him and force him to touch the ball. I can only imagine what's going through this guy's head right now. I'd imagine it's something along the lines of what the f are you doing? All that to try to retain keeping the ball on their side. Sure, they technically got him to touch the ball, but the refs are just like, that doesn't count. They didn't call like a flag or anything on this. I guess they just pretended the USC team was composed of normal people and let the ball die, but for sure someone talked to these guys after they picked their jaws up off the floor and told them, hey, you can't do that. Think about how crazy it would be if this was just something you could do in football. Punt plays would start to look like those Stranger Danger videos adults would make you watch as a kid. Anyways, thank you for watching. If you made it all the way to the end, comment some goofy moments of athletes trying to outsmart the system you've seen before. I'd love to see some more clips like these. Anyways, have a lovely day, gamers. Peace.